Hey, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, would you all stand up so we can do opening prayer, please? Boy, it's a wonderful day out there, ain't it? Be here worshiping God today. All right, let us bow our heads, please. Dear only Father, we thank you for this wonderful and beautiful day that you give us to come here and worship you and sing songs and praise to you and just uh, remember that uh, Jesus Christ did die upon that cross for us and he died such a death for us so that someday we might have a hope of having that eternal life in heaven with him and that we can sing songs and praise to him and study his word today and as being here all as Christians to worship and sing songs and praise it's just a wonderful blessing and we ask the Lord that we pray for the sick that we know of that we'll be with them and in our prayers and that you might uplift them and heal them and comfort them and they might be back with us at the next point of time to worship you Lord and we ask that uh, you be with our military and we ask that you be with our leaders of this great country that you'll make them or help them make the right decisions for our country and we just ask that that it be a good uh, decision made for us as our our country and we ask lord that uh, you pray for our missionary work that's going on around the world and that it be a blessing and become a good thing and to help more people become Christians and to know you Lord we ask it we thank you so much for our elders and our deacons here at the Conway Church of Christ for the work that they do and we thank you for Derek here as he brings us the lesson today and we ask Lord that as we leave here today that you'll Take us to our home safely and be back again at the next point of time to worship you. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. From the heavens, praise his name. Praise Jehovah.
Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. <clears throat> you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? <clears throat> it is then good for nothing to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill and cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. There's a difference between the good ones and the great ones. There's a difference between the great ones and the greatest ones. My mind operates on the level of sports first, so let's, let's begin there and just humor me if, if you will. Let, let's consider a little bit basketball for a while. Who would you consider to be in the conversation of the greatest basketball players to ever play the game? I want to go old school first. Will you let me do that? Uh, let's go way back when. How about an, an Oscar Robertson? Woo, that's, that's well back. How about a Bill Russell or a Wilt Chamberlain? Some might say a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Let's make it a little bit closer now to the current time. Uh, we might say, you know, some laugh at me at this, but... I believe Steph Curry belongs, you know, in the conversation anyway. Now, that's just me, okay? I'm, I'm just saying, all right? But let, let's go backward from that, though. How about Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant? Okay, there are a lot of great, greats of that era, but I think those two really stand out. So I think we would all agree these are among the greatest basketball players ever to live. I guess I forgot LeBron James. No, I didn't forget him. I don't think he belongs there, so... Uh, greatest role player ever to play the game, without a doubt, hands down. So, but no, who, who's, who would you pick number one? Now, TJ, I'm so glad, because I've been thinking about TJ all through this week, and I'm like, he's probably not going to be here. What are the odds? And then they come up from Arkansas. Thank you, TJ. Very much appreciated. So we've had this conversation a lot, and, and between uh, him and me, it comes down to Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. I think we agree about that. And, and we talk about how we're in agreement on how defense, you basically have the same. Jump shot, as far as a mid-range jumper, about the same. Slashing ability, about the same. And, and there's one thing that stands out. Kobe in that long-range shot. I mean, it's, it's Steph Curry-like range. Maybe not quite that in accuracy, but it's awfully close. You, you give him space to breathe, and he's going to knock it down, especially in, in the big moment. And, and I think one-on-one... -on -one, I hate to say it, and I'd probably regret it, but I'd take the late Kobe Bryant, one-on-one. -on -one. I'm probably wrong, okay? But basketball is not an individual. It is a team sport. And because of that, I think this guy is right, right here. I think he's correct. I believe it's going to be MJ, Jumpman23. And the reason I'd say that, I think it's the same reason Tej would, is that he just had a way of, of elevating everyone else's game around him. It's, it's not just simply his greatness and his work ethic, although they're, they're unparalleled, but he just motivated people around him. He's the kind that makes Bill Winnington look like a starting center in the NBA. He, he's the guy who sends Horace Grant to the All-Star game. He's one that helps Scottie Pippen be one of the 50 greatest players of all time. No, he is not. <laughs> but MJ makes him look that way. He makes everyone around him better. All right, so let's talk football just for a, a few minutes. There's a difference between the good ones and the great ones. There's a difference between the great ones and the greatest. I want to go old school defense. I think John would appreciate it. Let's go old school defense for arguing. We never talk about the defensive guys anymore. It used to be a defensive game before they changed all the rules. How about Deacon Jones? How about a, another Jones? Ed Too Tall Jones. You got a nickname like that? You're a bad man. How about mean Joe Green, all right? You want to talk about the defensive side. Uh, what about a Lawrence Taylor? Not as good off the football field, but on, he was, he was really something. All right, let's move on to offense. Everybody wants that, so uh, how about Jim Brown at running back, one of the greatest athletes who ever lived? How about Jerry Rice at wide receiver? Everybody wants to talk quarterbacks, so let's talk quarterbacks. <laughs> The greatest of all time, and there have been some good ones. I, I said for many years, uh, and some may have laughed at me for it, but I said Joe Montana for many, many years. I now will relinquish that role to, uh, I'll say, Tom Brady. I feel like he's, he's earned that with his, his seven championships. Very impressive. 
But how blessed are we to be Missouri sports fans at the era that we are? Uh, we're beginning to see some very special things in PM13, some similar things to MJ23. And I'm, I'm not saying right now the greatest, no, it, it's a career thing. But let's let the guy have a career, and then let's talk about at the end of it who's the greatest of all time. I think he has a real shot, probably more than anyone uh, would, at possibly becoming that. But I think what's so impressive, though, about PM13 is the MJ23 effect he is having on his teammates. He gets wide receivers, his weapons, like Byron Pringle and Demarcus Robinson contracts with other teams. And then the next year, they're not even on those teams anymore. <laughs> It's just strange. They're not nearly as good whenever they don't have Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> he makes everyone on offense look amazing. His work ethic is tremendous. His talent is arguably the greatest that the game has ever seen. His humility, and, and it might sound silly, but his lack of greediness, his contentment. I know that sounds strange after the guy signs a half a billion dollar contract, but the, the thought, though, is he could have gotten twice that if he wanted but he took much less, a very team-friendly deal, according to the market, so that the team could continue to build and win. He's more about winning championships, he'll tell you that, than he is about making money. But what's so great about him is how he makes everyone around him better. And in my mind, that's what separates the great ones from the greatest one. In basketball, I think it's the guy who made everyone around him a better player. In football, I think it's the type that makes everyone around him better than what he originally was. In America, we idolize figures like these and, and you know, professional sports. Oh, man, these guys have it made. And, and we think, <laughs> I would never have an influence in life like Michael Jordan, like Kobe Bryant, like Tom Brady, or like Patrick Mahomes. I think God would like to argue with us about that. He made us to have an influence greater than sports figures and just every, everyday common people can do this. Uh, in fact, it's the purpose for which he has put us in this place. We're going to look back at this passage that was read, and we're going to spend about all of our time in this, this little excerpt from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Now, it runs from chapters 5 through 7 of, of Matthew, and we're only going to be covering four verses of it. So that's not very much, and it's early on in chapter 5. So let's reread two sentences found in back-to-back -back verses. Matthew 5, verse 13. Jesus speaking, you are the salt of the earth. And then we skip to the next verse, and we find in, in the opening sentence of verse 14, you are the light of the world. And if we're not careful, we can get lost just in these two short statements. The reason being, I look down at my skin, and I see just that. I see peach skin, not white granules. So what does Jesus mean whenever he says, you are salt, you are the salt. I don't look like salt. <laughs> he says, you are the light of the world. I don't think uh, either you or I are ever going to be confused as being a light source. Or you might get some reflection off of my head, but that's not really a, a light source of, of itself. It doesn't seem to be the case. So what in the world does Jesus mean you are light? I look down and I don't, I don't think and, and I don't see light. Well, some people would classify these among the parables of Jesus. Personally, I don't believe they belong there. I think it's just simply a figure of speech called a metaphor where one thing is stated to be another where obviously it's, it's not that thing, not literally. But it's because there's some characteristic that's shared in common between the two. I, I committed a cardinal sin. You shouldn't have let me do this. I just read two sentences. I just read a sentence and, and picked up and moved on. Read a sentence, picked up and moved on and said, I don't understand that. Well, that's why we don't understand things a lot of times in the Bible. Because we don't look at the fullness of the text. And if we'll just read on after something we don't understand very clearly, a lot of times there's a good explanation for what it is that was just stated. And that's the case with both of these. Looking back at verse 13 in Matthew 5, Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Now later on in our study, we'll talk about some other purposes of salt, but right now I want to focus on one, because I believe that's primarily what our Lord had in mind as he conveys right here. 
He says, you're the salt of the earth. And, and here's what I mean by that. The primary usage of salt for all people is to give flavor to food. And I'll admit, I'm a little bit of a saltaholic. I like this stuff. I, I could probably cut out some of that in my diet. And this is a dangerous time of year for me. Because like many of you, we're starting to get some produce in from our garden. And I'll take our cucumbers and I'll peel those and I'll slice them, you know, the perfect, uh, perfect depth, about like that. All these little slices. And I'll spread them all out across a dinner plate where they have good spacing. And then I'll douse them with a salt shaker. And my kids are learning to do it the right way. Every now and then they'll ask if I'll slice one up for them. Cucumber. Yeah, sure. So I peel it and I slice it up. Uh, I was a proud dad moment a couple days ago. I said, you guys want salt in unison? Yes, yeah, yeah, I want salt. <laughs> they know how to do it. It's the right way. After I'm done with my knife, I'll then take our yellow cherry tomatoes. They're not very big. Cherries. Yellow cherry tomatoes. And I'll cut every one of them after I rinse them off right down the middle. And I'll put them juicy side up so they can catch the most amount of salt, whatever I'm putting uh, in the shaker over the top of them. So I know how to do this. I love salt, I admit. Now, I don't do that with everything, but my garden, fruits and veggies, that is a requirement to do such a thing. My kids are learning that also. I think I came come by it honestly. My dad, every time my mom would make a delicious, fantastic cook, she'd make a delicious dinner, and dad would have his dinner plate full. First thing he would do is reach for the salt shaker. And it's one of those, it like poured out like twice as fast as the normal one, you know, all over it. Larry, you didn't even taste that food. Well, that's what he wants. He likes salt. When you love salt, it doesn't matter how much you have. You can't get too much salt. And your heart might say otherwise, but not, you know, not your brain. My brother, however, he takes things to a whole new level in our family. In the rare instance we get together anymore, we, maybe we're fishing late one day, and we'll stop at a fast food restaurant. Uh, the first thing my brother does, he carries a salt shaker in his truck with him everywhere he goes. Fast food, you know how salty fast food is anyway. First thing he does is pull off the bun on his burger, and I mean, he'll drown that burger in salt. Puts the bun back on. He'll have a, a bag of french fries or onion rings, and you can hear, it's like an earthquake, you know, in the bag with all the salt moving around uh, in it. Well, that's what my brother does. Several years ago, I, I thought, I'm going to try to get a little bit healthier. I've probably taken in a little too much salt. And I was at the store, I can't go without salt, though. And so I was at the store, and I saw this, uh, what's called half salt. I thought, well, that's interesting. And so it, it all looks the same. It just has half the sodium content in it. I don't know if it's healthy or not, but, you know, it looked it at the time. And so I bought it, and I emptied the container inside of my salt shaker, and I'd been eating that for several meals, and, and so it happened my brother came up. And Vanessa made a delicious dinner for us, and we sat down for dinner, and I know what, what Clint wants. And so I bring out, hey, you want some salt? Oh, yeah, I'll take some salt, you know, and puts it on there. Didn't say a word. Got to the end of the meal. I said, hey, did you notice anything about that salt? He said, I noticed I had to use twice as much. <laughs> the guy's a wizard. I didn't tell him. Listen, when you are a salt connoisseur, you understand what you're eating. And the point is this. You can take out half the sodium content. You can still have the, the white granules and, and use it. But you're only going to have half the flavor. And you're going to need to use double the amount to get the same effect. You can take out all the sodium if you want, and you can still have the white granules, and, and you can use it, but the flavor is going to be missing, and it's not going to do you any good. Do you understand what Jesus is saying? You are the salt of the earth. The world is the food, and, and you flavor it. You're the one who makes the difference, but you have to make sure that, that you're fully flavorful and that you're interacting with that food. And I think it's a good reminder for all of us. God didn't call us to, to go live in a corner by ourselves and never have any interaction with anyone. No, we can't be of the world, but he still requires us to be in the world. We have to have relationships. We have to have interactions with people because he's put us here not just for we ourselves and, and for our families and, and for you know, those closest to us to be saved, but to try to help with the salvation of as many other people as possible. I mean, can you imagine Jesus calling his 12 apostles and then they go to an upper room and they set up camp in the upper room and they play cards together every day and they read their Bibles and they pray together and they go out on the Sabbath day and they worship and then they go right back to their upper room. 
Jesus and the apostles never would have changed the world with that lack of interaction. They realize we are the salt of the earth, and we're the same thing. God wants us to be in the world, though we're not of the world. He wants us to have meaningful relationships in the world so that we can reach people with the same blessings that Christ has shared with us. You are the salt of the earth. You are the flavor of the world. Well, then we look on to verses 14 and 15. You are the light of the world. And here's what I mean by that. A city that is set on a hill can not be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. The purpose of a light is to shine when and where needed. Almost all of you know I live in a house of, household of six and with four young kids. So in one of the 17 things that I'm fixing in the course of, of every week that's been broken, every now and then I'll, I'll need some help. I'll, I'll be working in a dark corner somewhere. And so I'll mention to one of the kids, okay, here's the flashlight. I need you to shine this light right here while I'm operating the wrench or the screwdriver. And as I'm pouring and sweat and complete frustration at something that's not being fixed, you know, I'm not very good at that kind of stuff, I'll get to notice, I can't even see what I'm doing. And I'll look over and, and I'll see a kid. <laughs> I get so irritated. I need that light right here, right now. Otherwise, it does me no good. <laughs> Once again, I come by it honestly. I'm getting my payback. I don't know how many times my father got frustrated at me because I was... <laughs> just bored <laughs> what's going on I was supposed to be holding the light at that place at that point in time if you don't do it at that spot and at that time it's not going to do any good that window is going to close and you're not always going to need the light in that, splay, that space and at that time God opens windows of opportunity for us to shine his light at certain places at certain times and I hope we grasp that it's not always going to do good to have light in that area it's all about the timing of it I think back at moments of my life, guys, mainly for me, it's, it's my high school years, okay, that I had such opportunities to shine God's light. Now that I realize, I, I didn't even really recognize back then, and, and truthfully, sadly, I, I didn't care about it as much as I should have. And now I look back on those years and things that I, I did and said that I shouldn't have and things that I should have done and, and said uh, that I didn't. And I, I really mean it when I say I'd give anything to go back and to relive those four years over again. I would love to be God's light and his salt in that same place. But if I were to show up in, in that school system on, what is it, August 22nd, and knock on the door and say, hey, Derek Yarber, former student, let me in. Uh, we're going to go through these years again. <laughs> They're going to look at me like I'm nuts. That window's closed. I don't have that same opportunity anymore. I think back in my teenage years with the Fordland Church of Christ and the influence that I could have been for good. And, and I mean, it wasn't all terrible, but man, there's so many things I could have and should have done better. I would love to go back to that youth group for about four years and be such a greater influence than what I was. That window's closed. I, I can't do that anymore. But now I can make this mistake and say, well, I'm a big giant failure, which may be true. But, and, and now there's nothing that I can do moving forward, and that's not the case. Because the windows that I had in, in a school system and in a church that have closed, God has opened other windows, and I would say maybe even doors like those in my life now. And I have the chance in the Conway Church of Christ to be the light and the salt in a ministerial role. And, and I've had that blessing for 12 years now, something I didn't have when I was a teenager. I've had the chance to be God's salt and light in the Conway uh, junior high for a couple of years and, and a homeschool co-op for a year for uh, to be a light and, and to be the salt as a teacher of math and Bible and the cross Christian school now for four years. You see, those windows are closed, but God's opened other windows and other doors, and I'm not unique in that. God right now has windows open and maybe even doors in your guys' life and in everyone else in this room's lives also, to be his influence for good, his salt and his light. But it's imperative that we recognize, one, those blessings as they are, but also, two, the imperative nature to act now because there's coming a time when the light's not going to need to be shown in that same spot. Salt's not going to be needed on that same food moving forward. 
Let's make use of the time that we have now. It, it's not on one person, whether you or, or me, to shine the light in all the places where it's... One person can't do it all. But God gives us windows and doors that he opens. And together, each of us can shine his light in all these different corners. And eventually, we can eradicate the darkness of this planet by working together, shining Jesus' light. It will benefit all if we choose to accomplish the purpose for which God has put us here. I want to read verse 16, and as we do, understanding the conversation of salt as well as, as light, tied in would be the thought of, of salt. Uh, you might say, let your salt go on the food. <laughs> and here he's also saying, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And because of the example, the influence they've seen in you, raise the bar in their own existences. Say like a Tom Brady, a Patrick Mahomes, a Kobe Bryant, or a Michael Jordan, but in much more meaningful ways and ones that last not for a few decades, but for all eternity. And glorify your Father in heaven. Now we talked about just one benefit of salt and one benefit of light. I want to broaden the conversation just a bit. So let's consider light for a moment and some other things that it does. Obviously it it shines illumination, and that helps us to better see. Uh, we studied this last week about how light can, and it does help to produce life. That's, that's quite significant. It warms. When otherwise it, it would be nasty, frigid, cold, this may be my favorite interesting fact about light. It's the fastest known phenomena in the universe. Do you know that light travels 186, some of you, I bet you might know it, physical science or, or physics, or you're just a nerd, it could be too. 186,000 miles per second. Think about that, 186,000 miles per second. So, if light were to randomly decide, hey, I'm going to take a trip from the Earth to the Moon. The Moon's about 240,000 miles away from the Earth, and so light could travel to the Moon and back in under three seconds. <laughs> that's a fast moon trip. That, well, that's how quick light is. If light decided, I want to go around the whole Earth, the Earth's about 25,000 miles in circumference, light would travel from pole to pole around the Earth seven and a half times, roughly, in one second. That's how fast light is. Do you understand what Jesus is saying here about us? You are the light of the Earth. Not only can you warm, not only can you give life, uh, not only can you illuminate the way, but also you can act as the fastest influence in someone's life, faster than anything in the universe, is what he's expressing to us. Pretty cool fact of light also. If it's completely dark outside and you go out and you flip on a switch, summertime, what happens? <laughs> All these bugs start just nailing that light. Like, light. Life sources can't resist light. In darkness. And then you might see some, some bats, especially if it's not too dark yet, swooping in. Maybe they're starting to take out some of those bugs. John, you go out on a boat on the lake at night in summer and you flip on the lights and the lights are pointing down at the water. What happens? <laughs> All the bait fish come up. And where's uh, there's Peyton? Yeah, his eyes are. Okay, <laughs> he's listening. So, uh, Peyton, that's when, when Big Daddy Fish and Big Mama Fish, those are the ones we're after, right? That's when they come up and say, oh, bait fish, yummy. Okay, uh, the barbers, we're at your uh, fall celebration, all right? And we've been visiting, having a good time, eating a lot of chili, and it's been judged. Someone, you know, fires up the bonfire. What's everybody do? Oh, you know, just like bugs and minnows. We're all drawn into the, that's interesting, isn't it? Life forces are drawn to the light. Jesus is saying, you are the light of the world. When people are living in darkness and they're experiencing all this hardship, they notice something different about you, and, and they're drawn to that. And they want to know more about it. And it's not because you don't have problems that come up in, in your life also. You know, if, if outsiders thought that of us, they only need to come spend a day at school or a day at work with us. Come spend an evening with the family at home, and you, you'll hear us get mad and scream at each other a time or two. <laughs> We have the same problems everybody else does, but the difference is we have a coping mechanism that those on the outside don't have. The difference is we know how to go about to address and many times to fix problems that those on the outside don't understand. And when they notice that about us, they're drawn to the light and they, they say, hey, how did you get this? I, I'm, I'm interested in that. 
Let your light so shine. Let your salt go on food as it's intended. So what's the purpose of salt? Well, we, we've covered the main one. Flavoring for food. But salt can be and is used for a lot of other purposes also. I have on my bucket list, uh, I would love to go to the Middle East. And I want to see every biblical site there is to offer. If it's in the Bible, yes, I want to go there. I'd like to see them all. But my number one thing, Brandon, is this. I want to take a float trip on the Jordan River. And I want to get a valid Israeli fishing license for one day. And I want to catch as many fish as I'm allowed to have and to keep. And then, Marty, when we get done, I want to go over to the bank, and I want to flay those fish on the bank, and I want to fry them and eat them on the bank of the Jordan River. That's something I want to do. And maybe I can have a second day of a float trip, and I can just end up into where the, the Jordan River pours, the Dead Sea, and I want to go out and just, just lie on one of the saltiest bodies of water on the planet. I, I want to float in it, because you can't really sink in the Dead Sea. You know, a lot of people are like I am. They find that interesting, and they want to go there for reasons of tourism, but others go there for medicinal purposes. Because of the high mineral, including the salt content, there's actually a medical benefit to the body of soaking in these waters. And that's one blessing. You know, Epsom salt, people have done that for years and, and years. That it also can help to heal problems of the body. Third reason, salt can be used not as much anymore in the days of refrigeration, but prior to it, uh, it was used a lot as a preservative. But even yet today, John, let's say you're wanting to make a batch of bison jerky. And the way you go about that, you need the bison meat. But what's the, the major ingredient? Number one, other than the meat itself, <laughs> some form of salt. And it's amazing how you can leave that meat out for two, three days, and you can still eat it, and it's not going to hurt you compared to a lot of other foods that would spoil. It's a preservative. Do you see what Jesus is saying? You, my people, when life is done correctly, you are the salt of the earth. You give flavor to the otherwise bland world that I perceive. You can heal those that are sick. That's something that salt can do. And in the process, you can help preserve lives on this planet. Now, are you still looking at yourself and saying, I'm not Tom Brady. I'm not pa Patrick Mahomes, I'm, I'm not Michael Jordan, I'm not Kobe Bryant, I'm not Steph Curry. <laughs> no, you're something greater than that. If only we could see ourselves in the way that, that God looks down and sees us in the potential that lies within every one of us. Philippians 2, verses 14 and 15, Paul says, Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in this world. This terminology was used in the ancient times of the luminaries in the night sky. And we don't get to enjoy this quite as much as people used to, but you get out well away from a town where there are no street lights, and you look up at the night sky, and what would just be black, you see these beautiful just balls of light that are shining. And for millennia, people have just gaze at these in, in sheer wonder. It's, it's amazing, they say. God says, that's the way I see you. Like people look up in the night sky, wow, look at that. He says, I look down and I see my people as, as beams of light in an otherwise dark place. I want you to shine as my stars in the darkness of the night sky. And to do that, we're told in verse uh, 14 of Philippians 2, do all, here's how you're going to stand out and how I am also. How you can make an impression on somebody just like that. Do all things without complaining. <laughs> we don't talk about that very much, do we? Well, I'll do what I have to do, but I hate it. <laughs> no, that's not it. Do it without complaining. When someone, and I'm, don't please don't think I'm trying to pick on anyone because I'm not, but when someone asks you, how's your day going? What's your response to that? <sighs> another day, another grind. <laughs> uh, how, how's, your, how's your day going? Well, I'm not six feet under. Hmm, that's nice. Pleasant person to converse with. Huh? Uh, how are things going at work? I, I hate my job. Hate my coworkers. Hate my boss. Hate my life. Hmm, that sounds great. Uh, ask it, hey, how are, you, how are you guys doing? Oh, mom made me come. Oh, glad you're here. <laughs> How's school going? I hate school. 
I hate my classmates. I hate my teachers. I hate the principal. I hate my life. Hmm, that's nice. I, does anyone really want to be around that? Do you think anyone wants to have that kind of life that we enjoy? <laughs> but when someone asks you and you can honestly say, how's your day going? Awesome. How's your, it's incredible. How are things going at work? God has given me <laughs> an incredible way to provide for my family. I don't deserve this. A lot of people don't get this. Or I, I, I cherish every day of it. How are things going in your family? Terrific. We have to enjoy it. another day, an evening together. We're all healthy. And I mean, what kind of mindset do we take? Do people want the life that we advertise to them? God says, you shine as my lights in the darkness of the night sky. And this is the way you do it. The number one way you want to make an impression on people, do everything in your life without complaining. And look at it as a blessing and as an opportunity. That's how you're going to stand out. Going back to our passage of Matthew 5, verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. Verse 14, you are the light of the world. Verse 16, understood, so let your salt mingle with the food. Directly stated, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So they can look at your life and when they get the gospel message say, I've seen that in real life for so long and I've wanted that for the longest time. And they actually desire what it is that you advertise on a daily basis to them. So as people look at you, can they see that the blinding light of Christ coming through you? And I don't think it's intended to be something like the moon. You know, of course, it, it reflects the light of the sun. I think it's something much grander than that. I believe we should look at ourselves more like a prism. And when Jesus' light shines into us like a prism, you know, it'll, the light will shoot out in every direction. I think that's the point. That the light of Jesus shoots out in every direction from every sphere of your existence. People are drawn to that light and they want what it is that you have. You have been called to be the salt of the earth and to be the light of the world. But you can't have Jesus' light shining through you until you get Christ's light shining on you and you accept that light into you. The man who wrote in Philippians 2, we read that just a moment ago, you shine as lights in the world. He knows about light and the shining of it. <laughs> when he's on the road to Damascus, whew, the, the light knocks him right off the animal in which he's riding. He's blinded for three days, but he lets that light that has come on him into him. When in faith he obeys the Lord's instruction. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Calling on the name of the Lord. Sunday morning class, at this point he's been regenerated. He has become a new creation. Because he has the light of Christ that's come on him, shining into him. And right off the bat, he starts going out, interacting with as many people in the world as he possibly can for the rest of his life. Because he wants Jesus' light then to shine onto them so that it will shine into them also. Jesus has called each one of us. It's our purpose in this place to be the salt of the world's food, to be the light of the world, to shine Jesus' light as a prism in every direction, every sphere of our existence. But before we can shine out Jesus' light, we first have to let his light shine on us. And right here in this setting, his light is shining on every person in this room. But then we have to let that light inside of us by putting our faith into him and obeying him. If you need Jesus' light in you so it can shine through you. If you want to be the salt of the world's food, come find your help in Christ while we stand and sing together.
seated. <laughs> Can he still feel the nails? Every time I fail, can he hear the crowd cry, crucify again? Am I causing him pain when I know I've got to change? Cause I just can't bear the thought of hurting him. Oh, Can he still feel the nails every time I fail? Can he hear the crowd cry, crucify again? Am I causing him pain when I know I've got to change? Cause I just can't bear the After this song, we'll uh, observe the Lord's table. <clears throat> There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of
For on the basis of it, the people received the law. What further need was there for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be designated according to the order of Aaron? When the priesthood is changed of necessity, there takes place a change of law also. For the one concerning whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which no one has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord was descended from Judah, a tribe with reference to which Moses spoke nothing concerning priests. And this is clear still if another priest arises according to the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become such not on the basis of a law of physical requirement, but according to the power of an indestructible life. For it is attested of him, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, there is a setting aside of former commandment because of its weakness and uselessness, for the law made nothing perfect. And on the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And inasmuch as it was not without an oath, for they indeed became priests without an oath, but he was with an oath through the one who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. So much the more also Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. The former priests on the one hand existed in greater numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing. But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Therefore, he is able to save forever those who draw near to him through him, near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, First for his own sins and then for the sins of the people because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints a son made perfect forever. Now the main point and what has been said is this, we have such a high priest 
who has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. It's a long read, but it's so important for us to understand what it was that Jesus did for us. We see in the, in the old law that what we saw was men who were appointed and men who were imperfect, who were sinful, and, and we see that they had to go forth and they had to sacrifice for themselves first in order to even enter into that holy place and make intercession for the people. We see that those priests grew old and they died. We see that there's this pattern in the Old Testament of, of good priests and bad. Those who led the people righteously and those who did not. And so there was a replacement. There was the old put away and the new set in place because God had a plan for something better. Not just better perfect in every way we see a priest who was brought up Jesus himself perfect holy innocent undefiled exalted as what we just read here in Hebrews one that had to offer a sacrifice only one time because it was perfect and that was a sacrifice that was able to, to put away sin forever and we see a priest who is able to make intercession for us continually. Why is that? Because in the old ways, that priest only entered into that holy of holies once a year. And yet we have a high priest who sits at the right hand of God, his father, forever, eternally, able and willing to make intercession for us at all times. Not that we should go on sinning, but that we understand that whenever it is that we do fail, he is just and righteous and willing to intercede on our behalf. And not only, obviously, is he our high priest, but that he's our sacrifice in the same way that he was perfect, holy, innocent, undefiled, and exalted forever. Jesus took the entirety of that process and he said, I will take care of this. I will take care of this once and for all so that this never has to be done again. I'll finish up my thoughts here and still in Hebrews, but in chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this creation, but through the blood, and not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and ashes of a heifer sprinkled have been defiled, sanct have who have been defiled, sanctified for the cleansing of the flesh, how much more will be the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God. Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He took care of it once and for all so that we have an opportunity and an avenue to become part of his people, his church, and a member of his family. I hope these thoughts help you as we are about to shake of these emblems that's, that recognize and resemble and help us to reflect upon that sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Carter, would you offer us a prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity um, to worship you this morning and, and to remember your son and what he did on the cross for us, Father, as we are about to um, partake of the bread. Um, help us to uh, remember your, your son's body uh, who died on the cross for our sins. And we pray this in your son's name. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, 
I want to thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, and you sent to this world. He showed us how to live and pay the ultimate price for our sins, Lord. Please help us to be mindful as we partake of this fruit of the vine, Lord. And uh, please help us to take this in a, in a worthy manner, Lord. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Was anyone overlooked? That concludes the Lord's Supper and that part of our worship service, but we have another opportunity to worship our God and the giving back as we've been prospered this past week. We have example and instruction from the Apostle Paul to the uh, first century church in Corinth that we're to lay by in store and that those collections are to be made on the first day of the week. This is not um, a request from those who are not members here at Conway, but, but an opportunity for those of us who do worship and attend here to give back, to show our love and appreciation to our God uh, through the giving back of the funds that, we've been, that we've, pre- we've been prospered with this past week. And, of course, those funds then to be used for the good and the work of the church here. So if you would, let's pray. Father God, we do thank you for the opportunity to give back. Father, to express our love and our commitment to you. Father, we pray that we do so with a, with a glad heart. Father, thankful for, for this opportunity. Father, we pray for the works that this church is involved in. We pray blessing on these, these funds and these monies. Father, we We pray for our elders as they make decisions regarding the proper and good use of these funds, Father. And we we pray that the work that we do here is prosperous, that we are certainly the light and the salt that this world desperately needs. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet, I see the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see. And if I realize I've been sold out by my friends or my family, I can feel the rain reminding me in the eye.
give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And Tasked myself with announcements this month. Look out. Last, last time I uh, volunteered to take announcements, I, I said something about, uh, uh, man, now see, this is what you get, you know, for somebody choosing me to come up here and announce them. Bradley says, you know, you're the one that chooses us who does what, right? I'm like, yeah, I know. Um, got a couple uh, things that we're going to be putting up on the board out here in the, in the hallway. It's uh, Camp Shining Sun and the Marshfield Church of Christ BBS. Um, the Camp Shining Sun is October 11th through the 14th, and then the Marshfield uh, VBS will be July 17th through the 21st. Again, I'll post this on the board out here in the hallway. Uh, welcome to all uh, our guests. Um, if I hadn't gone around to shake your hands, I apologize. I'll try to do so. And, Make sure everybody else does the same thing. So don't slip out the, the back door before we can. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. Um, also, if I hadn't gotten around to everybody, I uh, apologize for that as well. Uh, I'm going to do my best to, uh, to either, well, I don't have Facebook anymore, so I've been banned from that. 
I don't know, I probably posted something Christian or something, I don't know. Uh, but that's okay, I, I, don't, I don't really need it. Um, so I'm going to use my wife to maybe go through like the Church Conway Facebook page. If anybody posts anything, um, I'll be sure to try to write that down and get that mentioned in the, uh, <clears throat> the announcements. But I did see Debbie, and uh, Debbie, she, I asked her about her daughter, and she uh, says that she had a, uh, I think it's pronounced intibio uh, treatment, um, and she says that she's doing pretty good today. She still has her ups and downs, um, but to please uh, continue to pray for her. Um, Scott approached me, uh, Bailey, and, and told me about Redonda's uncle, I believe it is, uh, John um, Booer. Booyer. Okay, John Booyer, uh, unfortunately, had, uh, he's been battling cancer and passed away yesterday. So please uh, give some hugs to, to Redonda. I apologize for that. That's, that's bad news. Um, I had not learned anything of new news with Craig Ray from the Fordland Church of Christ. Um, I know there are some people helping him with uh, uh, collecting funds and things to help him uh, with bills uh, with that. Um, but I will reach out this week to him and family um, and try to get any kind of update to keep you guys abreast of what's going on there. Okay. Yeah, he's he's an he's an incredible man. Yeah, hardworking farmer boy, that's for sure. Um, same with uh, Kathy Sicard. I know there's a few of you in here that have reached out to her and and Vic, and um, uh, but I'll do the same and and try to get everybody uh, uh, up to date on that. Okay, good deal. So Scott just said that uh, she has uh, shown some improvements as long as she keeps doing what the doctor's recommendations are. Uh, I believe Jeff and Rebecca are visiting um, Hannah and Hazel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so in good news with Hazel, I'm pretty sure she's, you know, out of the woods. There's nothing uh, uh, underlying. She's as, ha as uh, healthy as can be. So that's really good news. Um, we have a few things coming, <clears throat> excuse me, coming up this month, so be mindful of that. Uh, we've got the Happy Hollow singing. Again, our bulletins are out here. If you don't already know, they're out here in the foyer on the little table to the right as you walk out, um, and it has all these things listed. But we've got the Happy Hollow singing this month, the, uh, the summer sing that will be here in the building. Um, we've got ladies' Bible class at my sister's house, Andrea. She's hosting uh, on July 10th at 630 um, I think there's going to be karaoke or something there too, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Some a cappella church music right there. Let's see. Um, and this will be news to you, Marcy. We're hosting the, the youth uh, <laughs> next Sunday. So that's a little taste of her life. You know, that's me giving her late notice. So, yeah, so... Uh, AJ and Shelby are, are today. You guys are hosting it. And so next Sunday it'll be at our house. So look out. Uh, let's see. The bulletin says, um, so next Wednesday, it says June 5th. I'm sure you see through um, the typo. It's no big deal. It's July 5th. Uh, next Wednesday will be, an, it'll be an extra special day here. So we had the CIA KFC thing going on. It's the first Wednesday of the month, and uh, we're going to meet here as normal, 7, 7 p.m., and uh, what we're going to be, oh, we're going to be at the other building. Okay, thanks for that, Derek. So not in this building. We'll be next Wednesday in that building down there, 7 p.m., uh, celebrating our brother, John Huckabee, um, that wonderful news of him being cancer-free. Uh, I know that's been a long bout, and uh, man, it's a uh, it, it puts goosebumps on, I know, more than just myself. Uh, 
that, that's good news. And, and so we're going to be celebrating uh, that good news. Uh, I think barbecue is like your fave. So everybody, uh, you don't need to bring, you know, a, a, a main dish, a dessert, and a side. Just everybody brings something, whether it's a main, a side, a dish, or something. If everybody can volunteer uh, and come through for that, that's going to be awesome because I'm going to be really hungry. I was going to mention that. That's, that's okay, Derek. You know, I mean, I picked myself to be up here to... It's not, not good enough that you're up here an hour. And... Um, <laughs> I love you, bro. Uh, so, yes, uh, Facebook, the Conway Facebook page. Um, please post on there what Derek was saying. Just post on there so that everybody knows what we're bringing and we don't have a bunch of duplicates. And, um, so, yeah, that's going to be good stuff, man. Can't wait for that, John. Uh, and then lastly, uh, uh, today is the last chance for the Building Renovation Committee uh, to view and or make inputs uh, in, the, in the classroom out here, the adult classroom. There's the blueprints and the plans for building renovation over here. And so, uh, especially the building renovation committee, maybe if you hadn't already seen it, you need to get back there, take a look at it, um, get with John and some of the other elders, um, because today is the last day to look at it, to understand what's going to be happening. Uh, it's going to be sent off as a, uh, as a uh, set contract. So please, if you haven't already, and you're part of that committee, get back there in the adult classroom, take a look at it. I think John will probably be back there to maybe answer some questions. I'm not too sure. All right, if I, is there anything else that I might have missed? Any hands raising? Okay. Yeah, you're always pulling my leg. All right, good deal. Let's close it up with a closing prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so very thankful for the opportunity that we had to come and worship you today, Father, and, and uh, to sing praises unto thee, Father, and, and learn more of your word. And, and Father, to uh, understand that special relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. And Father, we hope that it is all in a well-pleasing manner. And Father, we are so very thankful for the talented folks that, that, uh, that are teaching and are leaders here and and, and Derek, as he preaches, Father, we are very, very blessed with these folks, and, and uh, we thank you for them. And, Father, we are uh, mindful of uh, family and friends from around the community that we uh, have that uh, have various uh, ailments. And, and those that have passed, Father, uh, Craig Ray and Kathy Sicard, uh, Redonda's uh, Uncle John, Baby Hazel, as she's recovering, let her continue to grow in strength. Uh, Fawn's brother, Ken, and, and Debbie's daughter and her ailments. And Father, we uh, just ask the strength and, and uh, courage for each, and each one of those and, and uh, help them uh, continue on with the recoveries and, and to fight and, and uh, just let them know that we love them and, and are praying for them. And Father, we are so very thankful that uh, you give us an opportunity to go into a new week, Father, is, that is not promised. And let us always be good. Let us do faithful work, hard work uh, throughout this week. Let us be the salt and light as we learn in our sermon, Father, to, to flavor those around us. And let us be the light and the example to those around us at all times. And, Father, let us come to you often for wisdom and guidance and all the decisions we have to make. And, and Father, uh, once again, we thank you for this congregation here, and we thank you for our visitors that have come and, and uh, visited us, and, and uh, we just hope that each and every one of us, uh, again, have a great week and, and uh, think of you as often and pray to you as often as we can for everything uh, that you provide us. Again, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, our Savior, and it's in his name that we pray.